The most expensive thing I've personally ever sold on eBay was a pair of Bowflex adjustable weight dumbbells. I sold them in April of 2020 at the height of the pandemic for $1,150 plus shipping. I did pay to add some extra insurance to them because it was a very expensive package and fortunately they arrived safely, no issues at all. But unfortunately, the same thing cannot be said for my friend Amy and one of the most expensive items she's ever sold on eBay. Today I want to share with you her story about how UPS broke her $4,000 item. Check it out. So all I know about you is that I follow you on Instagram. I don't remember where that came about. I think it was just like one of those reseller accounts that I stumbled upon and then I just enjoy the content you post. You don't post a ton on there, um, but a couple months ago, uh, you posted a really cool find that you, you bought, I think at an auction, uh, and I'll let you take it away and kind of explain where you got it and what the item was. Sure, so about two years ago, I was actually following a bunch of uh, live auctions online. Um, yeah. I use Auction Zip, um, and I'm really into Disney stuff, so I like to pick up Disney and sell Disney and go to Disney so yeah. it, was a, it was a Disney collector um, in New York City I'm from Connecticut so it was maybe an hour and a half drive so it was pretty close yeah. so they had a, a bunch of people they know the uh, WDCC collection they're like the Disney mm -hmm. figures so I picked up a bunch of those and then they had this huge Snow White piece um, and nobody was really bidding on it and I looked it up online and I couldn't really find anything um, it yeah. had a, a number that I think it was like 125 out of 255 or something. So I knew it was a, a rare piece. Um, I looked up the artist really quick. It was an Italian artist and I just put a bid in. Um, I won it for 650. Um, there is a- Just to clarify that it's $650, not dollars and 50 cents. Yeah. $650 is an 18% buyer's fee. Um, I don't pay tax because it's under my LLC. Yeah. And then that was it. I think I picked up maybe 30 other smaller items. Um, I spent, it was one of my bigger purchases. I spent almost $2,000 at that auction. Um, on, on everything, like all like on everything. all 31 items together. Oh, yeah. yep. so I want to put a picture of the item on the screen here, what we're talking about. When I saw it on Instagram, I didn't realize how big it was. Like I was like, oh, this is like, you know, a little 12 inch wide or 12 inch tall, but this thing was like two feet wide, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think it's and it was made of what, ceramic or something? Yep, it was. It's made of ceramic. It was, I think, twenty-seven pounds. It's thirty-five inches, That's and it's, it's pretty tall. It was. It was a big. It was big. Yeah. Um, so I mean, so that was a big risk. I mean, you're paying six hundred fifty bucks for something, knowing that you're probably going to have to sell that online and ship it to somebody. So, did you think about that, like in depth, before you bought it, or did you maybe have the possibility that you would sell it local, or what was like your thought process going into it? Yeah, I definitely wanted to sell it local. Um, I yeah. looked up. Um, how much it would ship. I figured it'd be about $500 to ship. Um, but I had a bunch of people reach out to me too, that they wanted me to drive like halfway across the country to meet them. Or I figured someone in New York may want it, or I live in like Connecticut, New England. I figured there's some collectors up here, but yeah. people who reached out were from California, um, Florida. <laughs> yeah. All the big stuff always goes to the opposite side of the country. Yeah. One guy mm -hmm. actually reached out to me, um, he had the same unit and mm -hmm. my statue had the entire forest and mm -hmm. the rest of the, the, them didn't. So the artist stopped making that. So he said there was only actually a handful of units like mine that, that he also had, which, you know, piqued my, he didn't want to buy it. He was just informing me of, you know, the history. How rare it was. Art. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you got it listed on eBay, I assume. Yeah. eBay. Yeah. So how long was it listed before it sold? Uh, it was listed for two years. Two years. Okay. So it took a while. So big, big investment took a while to sell, but you got the notification that it sold for how much money? Yep. $4,000. Four, $4,000. That's crazy. So I, I, obviously you were super excited for, for that, that sale, but when did, when did the excitement from the sales or ever, maybe it never did, but did the excitement wear off when you realized that you did have to ship this item? I was I was super excited. I took off the day of work to figure out how to ship it. You know, I came came back to my office. I cleaned all the dust off of it. I was yeah. super scared to get it into my car to pick it up and just to move it. But I was stressed. But I was I was super I was super happy. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. Six fifty and the four thousand dollars. That's that that is an impressive flip. So was it four thousand plus shipping or four thousand free shipping? That was free shipping. Okay. Okay. So 
when you wanted to ship this, obviously, you, I, I think on Instagram you said it was kind of difficult to find a carrier that would insure it. I think USPS was like had some limits or whatever, and FedEx was super expensive. You, I think you had a, there was a private shipping company that wanted like nine hundred dollars to ship it. Yep. So I, I called FedEx first. They would only insure art up to a thousand dollars. I couldn't add on. I couldn't do anything. And then I called a private shipper. They wanted eight hundred dollars, and they couldn't. They wouldn't move it fast. And unfortunately, I had yeah. a small handling time on it. Um, so I called UPS. They quoted me uh, just over three hundred dollars, but they would insure up to I think twenty thousand. Um, wow. And they told me, you know, guaranteed if make sure you bring it in. I couldn't obviously buy it on my, through my eBay account. Yeah. So they did the shipping, they did the packing. I paid them directly for the, the um, payment of the boxes and everything. And, and they wow. promised I would be fully insured. That's all. The, the only time I've ever done that, I had a, a guitar and I didn't have a box for it. And I was like, I'll just take it to UPS. They, they offered the ship service thing. And it, the guitar sold for like 300 bucks or something. And the box and shipping to like Texas from South Carolina, Texas was gonna be like $250, like almost as much as the guitar costs. <laughs> I'm like, that's crazy. And I said, how much just for the box? Like I can ship it myself. And they wanted like $50 just for the box. So <laughs> I would I would say the only time I would recommend people watching this video to go to UPS and have them pack and ship something for you is in a case like yours, where it's a very rare item, very expensive, and you just want to take all the risk away. Like having that guarantee, like they're gonna pack it, they're gonna ship it, they're going to insure it in case it breaks. Uh, I think that's well worth the 300 bucks or so that you paid to ship it. So oh, yeah. Yep. Now we get into the good part. <laughs> so, so what, uh, I'll, I'll let you take it away from here. You shipped it off. How many days before you got an update about this? Yep. So I shipped it. Um, the guy had contacted me, so you know, did you ship it? Can I have the tracking number? And I was watching it. You know, they, it was supposed to take about three to five days ground. Mm -hmm. I watched it. Um, he actually owned a flower shop. So I was, kind of nervous with like a commercial uh, front house, but yeah. it was there fine. He signed it. He told me he signed for it. And then he opened it and sent me pictures and said it was destroyed. So it was totally shattered and he was really so upset. It wasn't just like one of the little birds broke it off. It was like completely just in shambles. It looks like it fell and the forest fell and smashed the, the, um, the uh, dwarves. <laughs> If you have a picture of that, definitely send it to me through Instagram. I'll put it in the video here. But yeah. uh, so that sucks. So, so you just sold this four thousand dollar item that you've had for two years. You go through all these hoops to ship it and insure it uh, and insure it properly, and then it arrives broken. So what are, what's what do you do now? Uh, so I, I told him to send me all the pictures. He he was obviously upset. He wouldn't send me pictures of the box. I'm like, I need it for insurance reasons. You know, he's like, give me my money. He filed, you know, very quickly with PayPal and with eBay. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, didn't want my account to get, you know, dinged. So yeah, I refunded okay. him knowing that I had insurance, but yeah. that's where the next, so that, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty scary. Like giving him the refund. I mean, I guess your insurance wasn't purchased through eBay. It was through UPS directly. So that was placing, a lot of trust in UPS to actually yeah. go through and pay the insurance claim because if they didn't pay it, you're you're out the four grand or yeah. the forty six hundred and fifty dollars right now. Right, right. So, okay. um, yeah, I, that's what was my first mistake. I I rushed through it and I I just wanted to please him and not get my account, <laughs> you know, hurt by him. So yeah, just one of those eBay buyers that I mean, I kind of don't blame him. Like, if I buy something for four thousand dollars and arrives broken, like. I guess I'll be upset, but also I think it's important for people to like be willing to communicate. Like if you're answering his emails and explaining things, like it seems like he was a kind of unreasonable, like not wanting to send photos of the box and everything, but, uh, yeah. and then so the anyway, you refunded him. And then how did you go from there? So he stopped communicating with me after I went to UPS and I was like, you know, I went to the UPS myself. I talked to the manager, like, what do I do? This guy, you know, he's not cooperating they needed him to either have UPS come inspect it. Um, and he w was not allowing that. So wow. I talked to the manager, he, you know, I see him every day. So he said, I'll handle it. I'll talk to him. I gave him his number and he, and en they ended up, he ended up just shipping it back broken. Um, so he never let UPS complete their claim there. Um, and I'm not sure what happened behind the scenes, but it took a very long time. I followed up with 
uh, UPS corporate. Wait, 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 we said very long time. What are we talking about? Like a um, week? Almost, almost a month and a half. Month and a half. Okay. So six, about six weeks. And they told and me the originally. The whole process of like UPS contacting him and him shipping, shipping it back and all this stuff is going on in that six week period. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, since I purchased it through the store, it was on the store's name. So the insurance was going to be paid to the store who was going to reimburse me. Hmm. Um, I had talked to uh, UPS myself saying, what's taking so long? They originally told me like five days. They have proof. They had the pictures. They had my invoice from eBay, you know, showing exactly how much he paid, how much yeah. I fully insured it for. Um, and they, they just kept reassuring me, you know, you're hundred percent all set. You were insured and you'll get the money. And eventually the owner was like, I don't know what's taking so long. He wrote me a check <laughs> for over the $4,000 and, um, I'm Wait, why sure. did he do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if there was some fees. He just had some extra dollars laying around. He's like, I feel bad. Just take yep. it. It was, it, was like, it was like 4,100 something? 4,200 something, I think. So not like an extra five bucks. It's like an extra $200 or so. Yeah, I don't know if it was maybe partial for the shipping or huh. maybe, I don't know. But That's yeah, awesome. 4,200. So, so you actually ended up making a little bit more money this way if, and it, like, if the package actually arrived in one piece. I made way more because I didn't have to pay eBay fees or promoted well, listings. There. Yeah. Awesome. Well, <laughs> so, not awesome. I'm sure like the mental anguish and all the, the, the yeah, legwork yeah. had to do had some monetary value. But I thought when I, when I saw this on your Instagram, this was a couple months ago and I was like, I really want to talk to her about this whole process because most things we sell aren't expensive enough to even worry with insurance. Like if we sell something for over 250 bucks or so, we'll add, um, we'll ship it through pirate ship and buy their insurance because they're typically a little bit easier to work with than UPS or USPS. Um, but an item like this, like I wouldn't know what to do. And I'm sure most people watching this video right now wouldn't know what to do either. So having you come on and share the story, I think is, it helps me understand like how something like this works. I don't know if I'm ever going to find something that I could sell for $4,000, but uh, if I do, I'll, I'll know uh, some things to avoid and some things to, to do and you know, save, save my time with. Uh, yeah. So what would you, um, going forward in your reselling business, are you still willing to pick up things like this in the future? Oh yeah, I definitely would. Yeah. So I mean, the, like the, the uh, profit in that is just remarkable and I enjoyed having that sit on my shelf. So, you know, it's, it, it, it took up a lot of room, but I liked, you know, I like having stuff like that around. So, and sure. it was a conversation. A lot of people knew about it. A lot of people wanted to know about it and anybody yeah. who saw it, you know, I, just take a couple seconds and just talk about who you are. Like, I don't know if you, I know you own Instagram. I don't know if you have any other social medias, but just if you want people to follow you there, just shout out who you are and where you want people to go. Sure. So I'm uh, Amy. I'm in CT or Connecticut. Um, I'm not on social media, but Instagram. I am Amy Lee underscore CT. Um, cool. I am part-time reseller and full-time in the IT department. So IT I, department. Awesome. Yeah, I, I teach good money because you got that nice Tesla. You were one of the first oh, yes. resellers for the Tesla. <laughs> so, uh, a little jealous, a little jealous, I have to admit. But yeah. Amy, thank you so much for uh, joining on this this video chat today. We're going to edit this down into uh, some content for the YouTube channel. But again, I thought this was a very just valuable story for people to hear because you don't people don't sell stuff this this interesting and expensive every day, and it seems like when you do something big like this and something bad happens and uh, I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's an interesting story to share. So thank you so much for being willing to jump on and uh, I appreciate it. All right. No problem. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's conversation with Amy. I know this is not our typical style video, but I thought it was a super interesting situation and I just wanted to dig a little bit deeper into it and see if there was any nuggets of information that we could pull out and be helpful for the reselling community at large. I will say that I haven't shipped a ton of things with added insurance. I shipped the Bowflex dumbbells and a couple little fragile things here and there that sell for more than say 250 bucks. If it sells for less than that, I generally just don't bother with it. Um, but I have added insurance to a few different things. And for me personally, I've found that the best option is shipping something with pirate ship and using their built-in insurance. I think it's called ship insurance or something. It's roughly the same price as adding insurance at the post office or the UPS store. But instead of dealing with those companies respectively, you just deal directly with pirate ship. And in my experience, they have been much easier to work with than the other 
independent shipping companies, if that makes sense. So now I wanna pass the question off to you guys. Number one, what is your threshold for adding extra insurance onto the items that you sell? Again, for us, it's about that $250 mark. Anything under that, we just kind of take a chance, let it ride, anything over that, and it typically becomes worth it for us to take the extra time and money to ensure that that package arrives safely. Number two, let me know if you've had any interesting shipping stories, things that you pack super well, double boxed, insured. You were so confident they were going to arrive in one piece and they arrived totally shattered or the opposite things that you packed and you were so nervous and you, you thought that for sure they were going to arrive shattered and somehow they actually made it in one piece. Drop those comments down below as well. Thanks again to Amy for joining me for today's video and sharing her story. I greatly appreciate you. Appreciate you guys watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it at all, at all, definitely let us know by hitting that like button down below. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below as well. Thanks again for watching. You're the best. And we'll catch you on the next one. Oh.